Oh, hello. Uh, so the title of this video is going to be How I Snuck Fish Home on an Airplane. And I'm just going to tell you guys a story while I'm cleaning this tank, which is now completely neglected and full of hair algae, which is so awful. Pour a pisto tank. <laughs> All right, it is story time. Um, so last, last week I was in Minnesota visiting my relatives out there. Um, and one of my sisters had said that she wanted to look at fish. She wanted, she was interested in maybe setting up a little fish tank in her apartment and wouldn't that be so nice and blah, blah, blah. And I said, sure, I will figure out where to go in Minnesota that's close to your house and we'll go and we'll take a look at fish and if you like them maybe you can get them or I can maybe buy you some fish as a present or something I don't know um, so she happens to live in the north end of the Twin Cities and there's a really nice pet shop or fish aquarium store uh, that happens to be <laughs> essentially a mile away from her work um, called Quality Aquatics. And so I took her there after everybody said, oh yeah, you should totally check that out. And we looked through everything and she was thinking that maybe she wanted like a small maybe five gallon, maybe 10 gallon at the most, maybe 15, um, little thing that could sit on her counter. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. So we go in there and they've got all these awesome, um, uh, like flower horn cichlids. And of course she falls in love with every single one of those. And I'm like, okay, you can't keep a flower horn. <laughs> in five gallons of water <laughs> and um and so we keep looking and we keep looking and we keep looking um I kind of try to steer her towards the bettas she doesn't want a betta uh I, she falls in love with a mabu puffer which again not good for a five gallon tank so I had to show her images of the of Murphy from Aquarium Co-op and how he's 20 inches long and still not even uh, fully grown at all. And, um, and she's like, oh, okay. And I said, yeah, you can get him a boo after you've had some experience fish keeping. And when you're living in a house with a sub, with like slab and you can set up like a 400 gallon tank, you know, or an 800 gallon tank, something big for this mabu. <laughs> um... I tried pointing her towards the pea puffers, but they're not as cool to her because, you know, they're small. So anyways, as we were looking at the pea puffers, there were these tiny little auto sinkless looking catfish with awesome stripes on their faces. And I was like, whoa, what in the heck are these? They're little like white and black stripey dudes with... Uh, um, orange eyes and they were not labeled there was no price on them um, so I found uh, a nice lady who worked there and was like what are these I've never seen them before and she said oh um, and she said I think those are orange autos but I'm not sure um, and I was like huh and we walked away from the store I did not buy them um, but I couldn't get those little guys out of my mind. I had never seen them before. I looked up orange autos online and they did not look like orange autos that I had ever seen before or that anybody on the internet seemed to have seen before. Um, so then I went back the next day by myself and I talked to the same lady again. And at this point, it looks like somebody has labeled them, put a price on them. I counted and there's nine of these little guys and uh, and it turns out there's something called Hypoptopoma 
Peru white, or species Peru white. And, uh, and so she apologized, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I've never seen them before, I didn't know. <laughs> um, and I was like, man, I don't suppose you guys ship. And she said, no, we don't ship. She's like, we can do something with a trans shipper maybe or whatever. And she said, but where are you from? Where are you going to? And I said, well, I'm going back to Seattle um, on Sunday. She's like, oh. And she said, well, you know, we have people come in for flower horn shows and they bring fish home on their laps in the, on the plane with them when they leave. And I said, oh, well, that's interesting. I've never really heard of that. I thought maybe you wouldn't be able to do that. And I said, how about this? We'll just, if we can put a hold on these guys and fly back out on Sunday. Um, at this point, it was Friday. Um, and then I would just come back on Sunday and get them. Or if not, then, you know, they could obviously sell them to somebody else. Um, and I was going to look around and see how it is that people bring fish home. Um, so I just, you know, I looked it up online and I saw a bunch of like YouTube videos or whatever and finally I was just like, what does the TSA have to say about this? Because <laughs> I'm, you know, within America and we've got all these restrictions and, um, and the TSA said you can bring pet fish home on the airplane as long as you put them into a clear container and bring them into the like in with your checked luggage not or not, no not not checked into your carry-on luggage not your checked bags so I was like oh well okay then so on Sunday I came back and I was like okay look got this Tupperware, this clear Tupperware container that I picked up at Target, and it just, you know, we put them into three separate bags, because there's nine of them, um, and obviously clear, and I wrote on the label, or on the bag in Sharpie, um, the name of the auto as far as it was labeled on their um, on their tank Hypoptopoma species Peru white <laughs> I practiced it a lot because I wanted to make sure I could say it if I needed to um, and then they just kind of nestled in to the Tupperware container and then I had to wait until my flight which wasn't until way later in that evening um, so they just kind of hung out under some towels in the trunk of the car that I had rented. It was like 70 degrees out in Minnesota at the time, maybe, maybe 60. Either way, it wasn't terribly hot. It wasn't terribly sunny. So they just kind of hung out in there and I checked on them every once in a while and they were doing just fine. Um, finally, I get to the TSA and I've got them, uh, in their little uh, container, but also in the bags. Um, and I had them inside of a shopping bag, like a paper, opaque shopping bag. And finally get to the uh, security checkpoint. And I told the woman, was, or I gave her my ID, and she's like, okay, cool, go on through. And I said, wait, I have pet fish. And she looked at me in the way that you would look at a, a, a differently mentally abled person <laughs> who is telling you information that doesn't matter. And I was like, okay, wait, I mean, I have pet fish in this bag right here. And she glances in the bag, sees that they're in clear containers, and she's like, oh, that's no problem. She says, just go and make sure that you tell them, you know, over by the... Uh, scanning machines and whatever and then hand them over and they'll have to look at them and whatever and I was like okay cool so I walked through TSA and I, and I handed my fish off to 
to an officer, a TSA officer, and he looked at them and was like, oh, they're so small. And I said, yes, they really are. They're autos and they don't get much bigger. And he's like, cool. So he handed them to another lady. Um, and she looked at them and she's like, what are they? I'm like, they're like a little catfish. <laughs> and, uh, and then, so I went through the scanner, they scanned me, they ended up having to do like a full pat down on me. Um, and they <laughs> dusted my, the palms of my hands for chemicals. That was fun. So it's a little bit warm and kind of weird. So they're just looking for something to react, I guess. Uh, and, and then they let me through. And now at this point you're thinking, hold on, Alyssa, you said you snuck fish onto the plane. What do you mean? This is not sneaking fish onto the plane. This is just telling people that you have fish and bringing them onto the plane legally and totally fine. Yes, it's very true. I apologize for slightly, slightly misrepresenting what I did. But here's the thing. What I actually was doing was sneaking them past other passengers. Why? People have a tendency to overreact when they think that they're gonna catch a criminal. <laughs> They'll freak out and start making a ruckus. So really what I did was I did not make a big deal out of it. I didn't, I wasn't loud about it or anything so that nobody was really paying attention to me, like none of the other passengers. Um, I told the TSA agents because those were the people who needed to know. Um, and then the rest of the time, those little fish were inside of a shopping bag, like, like they were laundry or something. Like nobody, nobody, nobody looked twice at my little shopping bag because they didn't care. Just why would they want to look inside my shopping bag? Be boring. Um, so yes, I snuck them onto the plane. I did not sneak them past TSA. Sneaking them past TSA would have been dumb. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you are within the U.S. and you happen to go to a location somewhere else in the U.S. and you go through and you find some fish store that's got some sort of crazy weird fish in it that you desperately need to bring home like I did with these little autos, um, there is hope it's possible that you can bring them home. Um, it does say on the website, on the TSA website, that the lead TSA agent does have final say. So it's possible that you might not be able to bring them home, I guess. But I think if you're just nice about it, and you try it, and you don't go and try this at some like super busy point, probably going to be okay. I think people are understanding that folks like to go shopping and people have weird hobbies like buying fish. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, well that was a way quicker story than I was expecting and I did not even get halfway through all this, all this hair algae that's mucking up this poor tank. <laughs> Well, that's okay. You want to take a look at those autos? I'm sure you do. All right. Here, let's take a look at them. If they're if they're showing themselves, they might be. Let's see. There's one in the back, right on that little heater. There's one on that stick. You can kind of see them. They don't seem to be too interested in the zucchini, although they were super interested in, um, they were very interested in uh, green beans and rapashi. And when I'm not here, 
they seem to be perfectly fine eating bloodworms and other sorts of meaty goods. <laughs> um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I can breed them. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not, but stranger things have happened. Uh, And since I'm here talking to you, let's do a quick update on those baby betas. I counted a little bit ago, and there's... I got to 45 before I got tired of counting. So there's definitely quite a few. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see them so much. But there's... They're still very small. I watched... I watched one eat a vinegar eel earlier today. And that was really adorable. He hunted it and he ate it. <laughs> All right. Hopefully that was something that, hopefully that wasn't a terrible uh, video for you guys. Um, you'll have to let me know if it was terrible. I don't know. I just wanted to share a little bit and that's it for today. All right. Have a good weekend or whatever week, whenever it is that you end up seeing this. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.